I've come over here to England for the purpose to help the British Guiding Association to bring up the movement in soaring and guiding also in England. Four, run, release. <laughs> I said that was very good, Cromwell. You like it? <laughs> this demonstrates a remarkable ease of control. channel, or to be more accurate, is towed across by a plane. The young lady in question is Miss Joan Meakin, 24 years old and London born. The object of her spectacular return to England, for she has been studying gliding in Germany for some years, is to imbue us with the same fervor for this sport as prevails over there. Once over Heston, the steel cable is dropped, and the young airwoman loops the loop as evidence of her control over the glider. And so to Earth at Heston. Mother is there to greet her. Liberty. Gliding, the real sport of the air. No motor, no hurry. No idea of going anywhere. Just the poetry of aviation, flying for the sake of flying. The scene is Australia and the scenery Australian. The plane climbs into the cloudy blue over the beautiful coast of New South Wales. The pilot, gaining altitude by the skillful use of prevailing winds and air currents, attains a height of a thousand feet in half an hour. Now he prepares to land. The nose is pointed into the wind, and dropping down to make a perfect landing, he scrapes the back of an idling horse. Gliding, the real spot of the air. Flight without power. At Dunstable Down, headquarters of England's largest gliding club, nearly 50 young enthusiasts, half of them from Germany, have gathered for a fortnight's meeting, and some of the best flyers are girls. But among the German visitors are some holding the highest gliding certificates. Cars or winches may be used for launching, but manpower is often sufficient, and once released, it is a matter of the pilot's skill to pick up the air currents. English gliders have travelled a hundred miles, but in Germany, where the art is even more advanced, they have stayed up forty hours and travelled five hundred miles. Gliding is a young man's sport, and a sphere for important aviation research. Without noise, without vibration, they circle and soar, these bird men of the air. But for the grimmer business of air defence, the power machine still rules. Seven of America's new flying fortresses are in formation, especially for movie turn. Heavily armed and heavily manned, they are claimed to be the fastest bombing planes aloft today. Sinister and terrifying if their mission is to destroy, but graceful and majestic as peace patrols. Gliding is nowadays not only an established sport, but also, and this is not so obvious, a laboriously acquired art. 
The dance at Dunstable serve as headquarters for the rapidly growing band of British gliders. And here experts like Mr. Wilkinson demonstrate their high degree of skill. Gliding in a Kirby kite, he moves gracefully on the air currents, floating through the sky smoothly, silently, and apparently with the greatest of ease. But before anyone can attain this standard, he or she must go through a long course of instruction, beginning with a tow along the ground. Even such a famous aviatrix as Amy Johnson, with so many world-famous aeroplane flights to her credit, has to learn how to fly a glider. So at Dunstable, when the weather is bad, she counts as a beginner and just watches. From France comes the pictorial record of an expert glider. Marcel Doré leaves Toulouse Aerodrome under tow by a monoplane. Notice the glider's wheels, which are used to facilitate the takeoff, and are then discarded. Having attained sufficient altitude, the French sun pilot soars and glides on his own, making a silent study of the air currents among the snowy peaks of the Pyrenees. Meanwhile, a movie tone cameraman makes a study of the glider and follows it in a breathless dive past the mountain slopes. It looks like a crash, but Dory has perfect control and within a few feet of the ground, rises on an upcurrent to demonstrate the art of stunting in a motorless machine. British Aviation this week acclaims the exploit of Flight Lieutenant Bill Murray and Stanley Sproul, two young pilots who established a new world two-seater duration record for gliding. Imagine staying up for 22 hours and 13 minutes over Whipsnade. Any moment you might fall asleep and wake up in the lounge den. For a week on Dunstable Downs, the national gliding contests have been taking place, and the Under Secretary for Air, Captain Harold Balfour MP, himself a pilot, goes up in one of the engineless planes. Women are among the keenest competitors, and it is a very healthy sign that the past year has seen a big growth in the number of glider pilots.